Avalokiteshvara or Padmapani Sanskrit, Avalokiteshvara is a bodhisattva who embodies the compassion of all Buddhas. This bodhisattva is variably depicted, described and portrayed in different cultures as either male or female. In Tibet, he is known as Chen Rezik, and in Cambodia as In Chinese Buddhism, Avalokiteshvara has evolved into the somewhat different female figure Guanyin. In Japan this figure is known as Kanzian or Kanon. Etymology The name Avalokiteshvara combines the verbal prefix ava down", Lokita, a past participle of the verb lok, to notice, behold, observe, here used in an active sense, and finally isvara, lord, ruler, sovereign, or master. In accordance with Sandhi Sanskrit rules of sound combination, a plus isvara becomes a svara. Combined, the parts mean, lord who gazes down at the world. The word loka, world, is absent from the name, but the phrase is implied. It does appear in the Cambodian form of the name, Loksveric. The earliest translation of the name into Chinese by authors such as Xuanzang was as Guanzizai Chinese, Guanzizai not the form used in East Asian Buddhism today, Guanyin Chinese. Guanyin. It was initially thought that this was due to a lack of fluency, as Guanzizai indicates the original Sanskrit form was Avalokitesvara, who looks down upon sound, i.e., the cries of sentient beings who need help. It is now understood that was the original form, and is also the origin of Guanyin, perceiving sound, cries. This translation was favored by the tendency of some Chinese translators, notably Kumarajiva, to use the variant Guan Shi Yin Guan Shi Yin, who perceives the world's lamentations, wherein Lok was read as simultaneously meaning both to look and world. Sanskrit Loka, Chinese, Shi Pinyin, Shi. The original form of Avalokitesvara appears in Sanskrit fragments of the 5th century. This earlier Sanskrit name was supplanted by the form containing the ending isvara, lord. But Avalokiteshvara does not occur in Sanskrit before the 7th century. The original meaning of the name fits the Buddhist understanding of the role of a bodhisattva. The reinterpretation presenting him as an isvara shows a strong influence of Hinduism, as the term isvara was usually connected to the Hindu notion of Vishnu in Vaishnavism or Shiva in Shaivism as the supreme lord, creator and ruler of the world. Some attributes of such a god were transmitted to the bodhisattva, but the mainstream of those who venerated Avalokiteshvara upheld the Buddhist rejection of the doctrine of any creator god. In Sanskrit, Avalokiteshvara is also referred to as Padmapani holder of the lotus, or Loksvara, lord of the world. In Tibetan, Avalokiteshvara is Chenrezik, Tibetan, and is said to emanate as the Dalai Lama the Karmapa and other high lamas. An etymology of the Tibetan name Chenrezik is Spyan, I, Ras, continuity, and Gzig, to look. This gives the meaning of one who always looks upon all beings with the eye of compassion. Origin Mahayana account According to the Karandavyuha Sutra, the sun and moon are said to be born from Avalokiteshvara's eyes, Shiva from his brow, Brahma from his shoulders, Narayana from his heart, Sarasvati from his teeth, the winds from his mouth, the earth from his feet, and the sky from his stomach. In this text and others, such as the longer Sukhavadivyuha Sutra, Avalokiteshvara is an attendant of Amitabha. Some texts which mention Avalokiteshvara include The Lotus Sutra is generally accepted to be the earliest literature teaching about the doctrines of Avalokiteshvara. These are found in the Lotus Sutra Chapter 25 Chinese this chapter is devoted to Avalokiteshvara, describing him as a compassionate bodhisattva who hears the cries of sentient beings, and who works tirelessly to help those who call upon his name. A total of 33 different manifestations of Avalokiteshvara are described, including female manifestations, all to suit the minds of various beings. The chapter consists of both a prose and a verse section. This earliest source often circulates separately as its own sutra, called the Avalokiteshvara Sutra Chinese, Guan Shi Yin Jing Pinyin, Guan Shi Yin Jing, and is commonly recited or chanted at Buddhist temples in East Asia. 
When the Chinese monk Faxian travelled to Mathura in India around 400 CE, he wrote about monks presenting offerings to Avalokiteshvara. When Xuanzang travelled to India in the 7th century, he provided eyewitness accounts of Avalokiteshvara statues being venerated by devotees from all walks of life, kings, to monks, to laypeople. In Chinese Buddhism and East Asia, Tangmi practices for the 18 armed form of Avalokiteshvara called Kundi are very popular. These practices have their basis in the early Indian Vajrayana, her origins lie with a Yakshini cult in Bengal and Orissa, and her name in Sanskrit, "...connotes a prostitute or other woman of low caste but specifically denotes a prominent local ogress whose divinized form becomes the subject of an important Buddhist cult starting in the 8th century." The popularity of Kundi is attested by the three extant translations of the Kundi Dharani Sutra from Sanskrit to Chinese, made from the end of the 7th century to the beginning of the 8th century. In late imperial China, these early esoteric traditions still thrived in Buddhist communities. Robert Gemello has also observed that in these communities, the esoteric practices of Kundi were extremely popular among both the populace and the elite. In the Tiantai school, six forms of Avalokiteshvara are defined. Each of the bodhisattvas' six qualities are said to break the hindrances respectively of the six realms of existence, hell beings, pratas, animals, humans, asuras, and devas. <laughs> Theravada account Veneration of Avalokiteshvara bodhisattva has continued to the present day in Sri Lanka, in times past both Tantrayana and Mahayana have been found in some of the Theravada countries, but today the Buddhism of Ceylon, Burma, Thailand, Laos, and Cambodia is almost exclusively Theravada, based on the Pali Canon. The only Mahayana deity that has entered the worship of ordinary Buddhists in Theravada countries is Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara. In Ceylon he is known as Natha Deva and mistaken by the majority for the Buddha yet to come, Bodhisattva Maitreya. The figure of Avalokiteshvara usually is found in the shrine room near the Buddha image. In more recent times, some Western educated Theravadins have attempted to identify Natha with Maitreya Bodhisattva. However, traditions and basic iconography, including an image of Amitabha Buddha on the front of the crown, identify Natha as Avalokiteshvara. Andrew Skilton writes. It is clear from sculptural evidence alone that the Mahayana was fairly widespread throughout Sri Lanka, although the modern account of the history of Buddhism on the island presents an unbroken and pure lineage of Theravada. One can only assume that similar trends were transmitted to other parts of Southeast Asia with Sri Lankan ordination lineages. Relics of an extensive cult of Avalokiteshvara can be seen in the present day figure of Natha. Avalokiteshvara is popularly worshipped in Myanmar, where he is called Lakanat or Lokabayoharnat, and Thailand, where he is called Loksvara. The Bodhisattva goes by many other names. In Indochina and Thailand, he is Loksvara, the Lord of the World. In Tibet, he is Chen Rezig, also spelled Spyan Ras G Ziggs, with a pitying look. In China, the Bodhisattva takes a female form and is called Guanyin, also spelled Quanyin, Quan Yin, Quan Yin, or Kun Yum hearing the sounds of the world. In Japan, Guanyin is Kanan or Kanzian, in Korea, Gwaneum, in Vietnam, Quan Am. <laughs> Modern scholarship Avalokiteshvara is worshipped as Natha in Sri Lanka. Tamil Buddhist tradition developed in Chola literature, such as in Buddhamitra's Virasolium, states that the Vedic sage Agastya learnt Tamil from Avalokiteshvara. The earlier Chinese traveller Xuanzang recorded a temple dedicated to Avalokiteshvara in the South Indian Mount Potalaka, a Sanskritization of Pothagai, where Tamil Hindu tradition places Agastya having learnt the Tamil language from Shiva. Avalokiteshvara worship gained popularity with the growth of the Abhyagiri Vihara's Tamraparnian Mahayana sect. Western scholars have not reached a consensus on the origin of the reverence for Avalokiteshvara. Some have suggested that Avalokiteshvara, along with many other supernatural beings in Buddhism, was a borrowing or absorption by Mahayana Buddhism of one or more deities from Hinduism, in particular Shiva or Vishnu. 
This seems to be based on the name Avalokiteshvara, on the basis of study of Buddhist scriptures, ancient Tamil literary sources, as well as field survey. The Japanese scholar Shu Hikasaka proposes the hypothesis that, the ancient Mount Potalaka, the residence of Avalokiteshvara described in the Gandavyuha Sutra and Xuanzang's Great Tang records on the western regions, is the real mountain Pothagai in Ambasamudram, Tirunelveli, Tamil Nadu. Shu also says that Mount Potalaka has been a sacred place for the people of South India from time immemorial. It is the traditional residence of Siddhar Agastya, at Agastya Mala. With the spread of Buddhism in the region beginning at the time of the great king Asoka in the 3rd century BCE, it became a holy place also for Buddhists, who gradually became dominant as a number of their hermits settled there. The local people, though, mainly remained followers of the Hindu religion. The mixed Hindu Buddhist cult culminated in the formation of the figure of Avalokiteshvara. The name Loksvara should not be confused with that of Loksvaraja, the Buddha under whom Dharmakara became a monk and made 48 vows before becoming Amitabha. Mantras and Dharanis Mahayana Buddhism relates Avalokiteshvara to the six syllable mantra Om Mani Padmi Hum. In Tibetan Buddhism, due to his association with this mantra, one form of Avalokiteshvara is called Sadaksari, Lord of the Six Syllables, in Sanskrit. Recitation of this mantra while using prayer beads is the most popular religious practice in Tibetan Buddhism. The connection between this famous mantra and Avalokiteshvara is documented for the first time in the Karandavyuha Sutra. This text is dated to around the late 4th century CE to the early 5th century CE. In this sutra, a bodhisattva is told by the Buddha that recitation of this mantra while focusing on the sound can lead to the attainment of 800 samadhis. The Karandavyuha Sutra also features the first appearance of the Dharani of Kundi, which occurs at the end of the sutra text. After the bodhisattva finally attains samadhi with the mantra, Om Manipadmi Hum. He is able to observe 77 kodas of fully enlightened Buddhas replying to him in one voice with the Kundi Dharani, Nama Saptanam Samyaksambuddha Katanam Tadiatha, Om Kail Kule Kunde Svaha. In Shingon Buddhism, the mantra for Avalokiteshvara is on Arori Kya Soa Ka. Japanese. On Arori Kya Soa Ka, the Nilakantha Dharani is an 82 syllable Dharani for Avalokiteshvara. Thousand-armed Avalokiteshvara One prominent Buddhist story tells of Avalokiteshvara vowing never to rest until he had freed all sentient beings from samsara. Despite strenuous effort, he realizes that many unhappy beings were yet to be saved. After struggling to comprehend the needs of so many, his head splits into eleven pieces. Amitabha, seeing his plight, gives him eleven heads with which to hear the cries of the suffering. Upon hearing these cries and comprehending them, Avalokiteshvara tries to reach out to all those who needed aid, but found that his two arms shattered into pieces. Once more, Amitabha comes to his aid and invests him with a thousand arms with which to aid the suffering multitudes. The Baoyin Temple, located in northwestern Sichuan, has an outstanding wooden image of the thousand armed Avalokiteshvara, an example of Ming Dynasty decorative sculpture. Topic. Tibetan Buddhist beliefs Avalokiteshvara is an important deity in Tibetan Buddhism. He is regarded in the Vajrayana teachings as a Buddha. In Tibetan Buddhism, Tara came into existence from a single tear shed by Avalokiteshvara. When the tear fell to the ground, it created a lake, and a lotus opening in the lake revealed Tara. In another version of this story, Tara emerges from the heart of Avalokiteshvara. In either version, it is Avalokiteshvara's outpouring of compassion which manifests Tara as a being. Manifestations Avalokiteshvara has an extraordinarily large number of manifestations in different forms including wisdom goddesses directly associated with him in images and texts. Some of the more commonly mentioned forms include Gallery See also Guanyin 
Ishvara Pure Land Buddhism Vishnu Dalai Lama equals equals notes